Hello friends, not emotionally mature enough to take compliments or express his feelings here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to talk about four things that you didn't know about Dota 2. Number one, Glimmer Cape, as well as a few other items in Dota, works like Blink Dagger, aka you can actually extend the range of these items 200 above what it shows on the UI. So for Blink Dagger, it says if you used Blink to teleport a distance over the maximum range, you'll be teleported four-fifths of the maximum range instead. So Valve has specifically programmed into the game an alt hover to explain this with Blink Dagger, but this works with quite a few other items in Dota, and it has not been coded where this is apparent anywhere in the game. Uh, so to demonstrate this, because it's such an obscure thing, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know that this is how Blink Dagger worked, uh, I'm going to put Pudge at the max range of blink dagger and if i click within the circle so i hold alt you can see that the that the blink circle goes right to pudge if i blink within the circle it's fine everything works as intended everything works exactly as you would expect if i try to blink out of the circle so just right next to pudge right behind him it puts me quite a bit far away from him, even though the maximum range was supposed to be on Pudge. So the weird thing with Glimmer Cape versus Blink Dagger, uh, and these other items versus Blink Dagger, is that the extra range that you get, that you can get, is not shown on the UI. So it says that the range on this is 550, and that is accurate with what this circle displays. And so if I hold all, if, if I use it on Pudge, what'll happen is my guy walks in, in perfectly in range, and then Glimmer capes him, which is exactly what you would expect. But if I stand a little bit out of the range, you can, well, not even a little bit out of the range, you can see my dude's not even close, and then I press Glimmer, I can actually Glimmer him from this distance, and Bottle works the same. So you can see that the range on Bottle is, you know, this big, and uh, if I control-click it on Pudge, it waits until I'm right in range to use it on him, but then I can do the exact same thing where I have that extended range. And I think the extended range is based on Blink Dagger. It's not based on a percentage of the radius of whatever item it is that you're using. Because if it was, then I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to bottle him from here because a percentage of this bottle range would actually be very small. It would be more like this. Like, this is where I could hit him from. But he can go all the way out here, and I can still bottle him from there. Salve range is a lot smaller, so if I do that... <laughs> It's really pathetic. It takes me a really long time to walk to him. But if I go here, I can actually solve him from this distance uh, without walking towards him. And that's why in lane sometimes it feels really awkward to solve the guy that you're supporting. It's usually because you're just barely out of that uh, extended range. So with Holy Locket, it's, it's the same. And this is very important for this item because I feel like the heroes that build Holy Locket... It's usually, you know, Phoenix, Undying, Winter Wyvern, these types of heroes that don't really necessarily want to get close to the enemies, but you also want to Holy Locket the guy that's getting gone on. And so, if you aren't using the extended Holy Locket range, you are making your own gameplay a lot harder. And so you can see here that this is the range, but I can actually Holy Locket him from a little bit outside of that range. Number two. Blinds are one of the only things in Dota that stack additively. And what that means, I will demonstrate using some uh, evasion first. So I will buy some butterflies. And three butterflies would total to uh, more than 100% evasion, 35% times three. Uh, but if I look at the stats of Broodmother, I can see that she actually has 73% evasion. So there are diminishing returns on stacking more and more evasion. And this this works even if you pick up, like, a Heaven's Halberd. This is not a butterfly-specific thing. So you can see here, still only 79% evasion. So I can hit the Broodmother, and sometimes, uh, I'll, albeit, you know, only 21% of the time, sometimes I do hit the Broodmother, even with no source of uh, true strike. Blinds, however, do not work like this. If I have two heroes that have blinds, so we have Broodmother here, who has an 80% blind with Silken Bola, uh, once you have the upgraded Aghanim Shard, and then you have Troll Warlord, who has a 60% blind. That stacks up to 140%, it caps out at 100. Without MKB, with no, no source of true strike, you can see that if we do the exact same thing here, he will literally never hit her. Not even once, uh, because they stack additively. It just adds the numbers, and if it totals to 100, you can't hit somebody. You're, you're immune to physical damage, at least from auto attacks. 
And this is actually why a lot of people will go for Radiance on some of these blind heroes. I remember there was a build for a while on Troll where you would go for uh, a Radiance on Troll. And that's because you would have nearly 80% mischance on the enemies because it, it stacks additively like that. Now, if this was Evasion, this would be different. It wouldn't stack as well, but it, it, was, it was so good that people were going for Radiance for a while. Number three, Damage Reduction also stacks additively. It is another one of these very few stats in Dota that actually stack additively. Now, before we get into the damage reduction, one other stat that did recently stack additively, and it was considered too OP, was healing reduction. So people would get Spirit Vessel, they would get a Shiva's, they would get a, a Scotty, and then that would stack up to like 140% healing reduction or something. And regen would even become negative. So it would cause people to take damage. So not only did it stack additively, but it didn't cap at 100%, which is hilarious. Uh, and then Valve nerfed that. Now it stacks diminishingly. And of course, because it stacks diminishingly, it just it can never go above 100%. Uh, with that being said, though, damage reduction does stack additively. So two sources of damage reduction that I think are pretty reasonable to get in, to get in a game would be Stampede, which gives you 40%, and then uh, Ursus and Rage, which gives, which gives 80%. And so that would be 120%. Of course, this maxes out at uh, 100%, doesn't like reflect damage or something like that. So you can see here, uh, obviously, if I'm Lina and I Laguna this guy, she does 901 damage. It's pure damage with the Aghanim Scepter. So, but if I use both of these at the same time, nothing. Abs nothing at all, no damage, uh, even though it's pure. So this does work on pure damage. And, uh, of course, you can see with just the Ursa and Rage, a little bit would go through. But with both of these, it is, it is nothing. One interesting thing, though, is that HP removal goes through 100% of damage reduction. It just does not consider damage reduction at all. So in uh, a hero like Necrophos, who has Heartstopper Aura, which is HP removal, it says it absolutely nowhere. Yep, not even in the alt hover, so I wouldn't expect anybody to know this. So here we can see Ursa is ticking for 18 damage per second. I press Enrage, it's still 18 damage per second. I press Centaur ulti, it's still 18 damage per second, even though otherwise, if it wasn't HP removal, I would take literally zero damage. The interesting thing about this, and this is totally tangential though, and just very weird Dota stuff, but this does not go through magic resistance. At least Necrophos's HP removal doesn't. So this is HP removal, which means it goes entirely through damage reduction, which means if I press Ursa ulti, I still keep ticking for 13 damage. But if I move the Hood of Defiance, which gives me 20% magic resistance to my backpack, I start taking 16 damage per second because this is magical damage, but HP removal. And so it's hilarious that this... This item would protect you against the HP removal of Necrophos, but it does nothing against the upgraded Laguna Blade of Lina. But then this does protect you against Lina, but does absolutely nothing versus the Heartstopper Aura. Number four, Witchblade pierces entirely through evasion if the target that you're attacking is spell immune because it doesn't go on cooldown for some reason. I'm absolutely certain that it should not work this way and that this is a glitch. But with that being said, uh, to demonstrate, you can see that, uh, of course, Windrunner, if she's Windrunning and you attack her normally, she's not magic immune. Of course, the Witchblade proc that hits her goes through the evasion. But that's it. I can't, I can't keep hitting. Every other attack is going to miss. You can see she's taking no damage from the auto attacks. But if she's spell immune, then it means that the Witchblade doesn't proc and so because of that, I suppose it's programmed where the Witchblade attack, when it's off cooldown, the next one is going to pierce through evasion. And so if it doesn't go on cooldown, it's like, oh, well, the next one will, of course, be the Witchblade hit that goes through evasion. But then it doesn't because it doesn't pierce spell immunity. So it just doesn't go on cooldown. And so I think a solution to this would be to just make it go on cooldown, but do no damage. That That's it. Simple as that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in another video.